to bring a level of service to the council that I don't believe is present at the time. I believe in working with people. I've always done that. I've had the reputation of being the voice sure. of reason. And so I intend to continue to be that voice of reason. But I also am going to expect more from my colleagues as they should expect from me. Okay, okay. Endeavor? Well, we only have a little time left, so I, I would like to express something. There has been a, a lot of fingers pointed at the immigrant community, at the Latinos, at, at the uninsured, as if they have cost us the hospital and the health center. And, I, and you hear people saying this, you read it on people's comments to articles in the paper, and there's been a lot of investigations as to why Solaris and Muhlenberg are in such dire financial straits. And they seem to indicate that that is not the cause. Now, it's a different type of racial profiling and race baiting, and I don't think anybody would tolerate it from an individual or a politician, so we shouldn't tolerate it from a corporation. We need Solaris to be a more responsible community citizen. We need them to recognize that there has been violence in the past that brought the, the guardian angels to town. We do not want to do anything that makes our, our, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, even when they're citizens, afraid to even march with us to try to save the hospital. And we know that their absence is not that they don't want the hospital saved, it is out of fear from the things that have been said in the newspaper. So I want everybody to watch their mouths and watch their hearts and show some more compassion to the vulnerable in our midst. Okay, I, I want to ask both of you, maybe you can uh, uh, give me some cl clarity on this here in terms of more of an infrastructure question in the city of Plainfield. You know, um, Plainfield is an old city a suburban city and we have a lot of tall trees in this town that uh, the other day toppled some toppled over um, and how are we going to deal with the, with the fact that maybe some trees on private homes need to be cut down because they endanger the population they can fall on someone else's home or they can fall and hit a car coming by how do we how do we do that right there I believe that an assessment that would have to be made by the Shear Tree Commission, I believe that any time there is a danger that is posed to any individual um, person or property, I believe that we should respond and we should make sure that we remediate the condition so that it, it becomes safe. So I think the Shear Tree Commission has to do an inventory of the trees across the city, but they can't do that without the level of funding that is required. And one of the things that I would like to, to work on when I get onto the council would be funding for the Shared Tree Commission at an appropriate level that would allow it to do the job with which it had been tasked. And so I wouldn't advocate um, just indiscriminately I'm cutting down trees because it's very important. Those trees serve a purpose. They produce the oxygen that we breathe. And this is a community that need those trees. And so we have to be very careful. If it poses a danger, yes. If it does not, then the tree should stand. And so I am not one who would advocate for the wholesale destruction of trees. So I hope that we can save our trees. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that here, uh, 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 Map, is that, uh, of course, you, we know the importance of the trees. But we have a lot of trees in this town, old trees, that uh, when you look up on them, they're on people's property. In fact, I had to cut one down three years ago. It uh, cost me about $2,200. Uh, and it was a danger, you know what I mean? And, and I've seen where, even on my own block, where I've seen you and Annie walk up, that there's a tree that uh, last year, when I was going to Kentucky, a part of the um, big branch fell, which was like its own tree itself. And this year, a big branch fell off the other side of the tree. Now the tree is basically hanging there 
on someone's property. But then above the branch, uh, above at the top of the tree, it's, it's, it's top heavy. So it's just a matter of time before this thing is either going to fall on the street, either it's going to kill somebody, it's going to tear my house up, yeah. it's going to tear my cars up. What do we do about something like that? Wherever dead trees are identified in this city, they should be removed. If they are on private property, the homeowner should be asked to remove such a dead tree that poses a risk to the occupants of that house as well as the people who might come onto the property for any number of reasons. So trees that are on private property that are dead and pose that pose a danger to the occupants of the home should be removed and our inspections department should should um, request the removal of those trees by the homeowners. If the trees are on city property, meaning on the curb, then by all means it should be handled by our Department of Public Works after a proper inspection is conducted by our Shared Tree um, Commission. So I am in favor of removing trees wherever they are that pose a danger to life and limb. If those trees are dead, they should be removed, whether it's by the property owner or by the city, would be determined on the placement of the tree. Okay, and let's say so here, because we're in a troubled economy today, if the homeowners, in all honesty, cannot afford to remove the trees, uh, can somehow we get a bill or get something passed where uh, public works that actually move trees from a curve or whatever, uh, that's on city property, can they remove the tree with the, of course, with the permission of the owner? Because, you know, the economy today, and I'm sure no one wants a tree to just fall on someone else's house. But if a tree is two, two, three thousand dollars to remove, you know, what, what, what can you do? I'm going to pose that right there towards Deborah Dow. Um, there are some concerns here, including in terms of insurance. Sure. Um, if your neighbor's tree falls on your house, there are issues of liability. And people need to check with their own homeowner's insurance and see what those causes are because in some cases, if you have not given your neighbor written notice that there is a problem with their tree and you fear it threatens your property, you have less legal standing. Okay, but can you actually give them, give them the, uh, uh, I mean, if, can a person walk up and say, hey, you, I think your tree is going to fall, or should they go through the channels of the city? They should send a, a certified letter to the homeowner. Who and should send it to? The, the city? You. If you feel your home is threatened by your neighbor's tree for your legal protection, you need to send a certified letter to your neighbor expressing your concern and keep that for your records. Because if you have property damage and you seek to recover against them, you need to be able to prove you have given notice. Okay, all right. You're so, asking another question, too, about the city. You know, what will, can we get a grant or can someone else, if the homeowner no, the, the, cannot the other, afford it? The other question before we go there is this right here, Deborah, is that if you submit it to, uh, if you have a problem and you think a tree is going to fall down or whatever, and you go down to uh, the city and talk to the inspection department, shouldn't they send an inspector out to inspect that tree? I think that's a viable option also. Yeah, okay. That's a viable option also. But I'm also saying if it doesn't get taken care of, you may have substantial property damage sure. that you will have to try to fix your home. And I'm just advising people that that extra step will help motivate your neighbor, number one. And if you have to try to recover damages, it puts you in a better legal position. Well, you know, I noticed that once I was, you know, I'm pretty handy around the house and I, and, and I was actually building a, a, a fence. And I didn't know that because my property border someone's driveway, the fence had to be a certain height. They didn't have any problem coming around saying, Mr. Jackson, you got to take that fence down. So you, you understand. Yeah. Well, everything doesn't get the same priority, and every neighborhood is, is sometimes treated differently for better or for worse. So all of us have to be our own best advocates. You know, democracy is a tool. You've got to work it. It doesn't work for you unless you're working it. 